Hi everyone, my name is Sarah. I'm the Assistant Director for the Anniston Museums and Gardens, and today I'm joined with a few of our ambassadors. Right now we have Babette, a ball python, and we thought we'd talk a little bit about how snakes detect their prey. Have you ever heard the saying, snakes smell with their tongues? Does that even make sense? Well, let's think about this for a minute. Have you ever seen a snake sniff like you would a dog or a cat or even a horse? I can't say I have. When snakes stick their tongues out and they wave them up and down, you'll notice that it's split on the end, like someone took a scissor. That's on purpose. Okay, snakes, they don't smell with their tongues, but they taste with them. They stick their tongue out, they wave it up and down, and they're able to collect particles around the, from the air, and they insert their tongue back in their mouth, and they put it in a specialized area called the Jacobson's organ. Now that's in the roof of their mouth. When they insert that into their Jacobson's organ, it sends a message to their brain saying, hey, I just tasted a rat. I just tasted a tree, whether it's food or not food. If they tasted food like a rat for Babette here, she's gonna go in the direction. Maybe it was on the right side of her tongue. Maybe it was on the left side of her tongue and she'll go that way to find her food. Here we have a local example. This is the red rat snake, also known as the corn snake. We do have the gray rat in Alabama, which has the same pattern as our red rat here. You'll notice it's almost like bricks going down their back and then a nice pretty checker on the underbelly. But your red rat snakes and your rat snakes, what's unique about them are their body shapes. They're more so shaped like a loaf of bread. So it's like a U upside down and then flat on the bottom. They have specialized scales on their sides that allow them to wedge themselves maybe along the bark of a tree or the side of your house. Oftentimes we find these guys up on our porches or something. And they're actually following the taste of maybe a bird, some eggs, or that nest. So not only are they gonna eat your rats and mice, but they're gonna go after your birds and they'll even be able to eat an entire egg, okay? When they follow the taste of their tongue, they're gonna locate their food and they'll wedge their bodies right on up there. But again, this is a non-venomous snake that's local to Alabama. It's the red rat snake and we also have the gray rat snake. Here we have the Florida king snake. Now Alabama has their own native king snakes. We have the eastern king snake and the speckled king snake, but they all have some really interesting diets. So the king snakes are unique in the sense that they love to eat reptiles and amphibians as well as their mammals. So sure, he's going to follow the taste of a rat or a mouse. Um, he'll follow the taste of a bird, a nest, but primarily he's gonna really love some reptiles and amphibians. And when I say reptiles and amphibians, I mean, he's gonna eat frogs. He would be down to eat a non-venomous snake, but he'd also be excited to find a venomous snake. So we love our king snakes because not only do they help with our population of rodents, but they also help with the population of venomous snakes like our copperheads, okay? They help manage them for us so that we don't encounter too many of them. But it's not only their tongue that helps them find their sources of prey or other things. Some snakes, like the ball python, like our pit vipers here in Alabama, they have these really unique holes along the upper lip. Why would they need to have holes up here, right? Those are actually heat sensors. So this girl is naturally nocturnal and they're gonna be found in Africa. Well, when they stick their tongue out and they're waving it around, they're mostly gonna be interested in something after they've seen, after they sensed a heat signal. When they sense the heat signal, like she did when I moved my hand, she's gonna go that direction and taste and say, oh, well, that's a lot of warmth. Is that food? Our pit vipers do the very same thing. These snakes, they're so unique and they're so special and their adaptations are mind blowing. So if you ever see one out in the wild, I highly suggest that you take a moment to appreciate that you've seen a wild snake, you give it its distance, and maybe do some research when you get home to determine what type of species it was.